When I was here in the 70s, when I first came here, and I was very involved in the movement politics, and one day I was standing in line in the Castro, waiting to get into a movie, uh, to see a movie, and I looked up and down the line, and I saw just people my own age, in their 20s and 30s, and it just struck me, really, like, like a bolt. Um, where were the seniors? Where were our elders? What had happened to them? Why weren't they with us? And I didn't know it then, but that was actually... Uh, a, a moment that would guide my activism for the next three and four decades. When we started out to build senior housing and senior services for the LGBT community, wherever I went, people would say, well, I never thought about gay aging. I never thought about the LGBT community getting old. We were just invisible. And to see how far we've come from then to now is extraordinary to me in my own lifetime. To see that LGBT seniors are visible, to understand in both our community and outside of our community the importance of embracing age and longevity and honoring and uh, not just taking care of seniors, but empowering uh, people and uh, celebrating life it makes me very proud of all the people that I've had the opportunity and privilege to work with. It is scary and uh, frightening and disappointing is how I felt uh, after the election. And I think we all felt that way. It took us a while to recover, but I was so moved and inspired by the Women's March on Washington. And I think we all were, and it gave us hope. Being around a, a little bit myself, a couple of decades, I know that it's not a straight line, that there's a lot of difficulties and challenges and mountains to climb. Um, that the important thing is to persist and to never give up and to keep pushing forward. But I think the message that I feel is most inspiring today is this is really an opportunity uh, that we have to create a more deeply and vital multicultural country than we've ever done before. I think what will come out of this is a deeper commitment to multiculturalism, a deeper commitment to a coalition that I think we see is build, building every day of people of color, of LGBT folks, of immigrants, m working together, supporting each other. Because crucial to this moment is the understanding, not just about our differences, which we need to honor and celebrate and acknowledge, but also the interconnectedness of all beings and all life. And it's holding those two, two experiences or understanding together that will make us uh, a stronger country when we come out of this. I think it's very important that we remember to keep our lives intact, that we remember to, whatever we do, that we do it with a sense of adventure that can sustain us. So when, when we do win back the government, when we have actually succeeded at what, what we're trying to do, that we're healthy, thriving people. So every day when you wake up, you need to think about how, what am I gonna to do today to make a difference? Am I gonna write a letter, an email? Am I gonna march, gonna make a phone call? But then also do your life. Do your life with joy and adventure so that we can all be there when the time comes.